Hello, Theodore Shubot here, giving you guys another message that you will not hear at church. The nation of Spain, the flower and crown of Christendom, has passed a new law that will, auto that will have police automatically deport Muslims from North Africa uh, if they so enter Spain. So if Muslims from North Africa, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, any one of those Moorish countries uh, enter Spain, the Spanish police is obligated to throw those Muslims back into their country. Just to give you uh, uh, what the report says, it says here, quote, a top European rights official warned Spain on Friday that it risked destroying its asylum system if it passed a law authorizing police to immediately deport migrants from its North African territories. Spain says the measure is needed to help its border guard uh, help its border guards secure the border of Cueta and Melilla, two Spanish cities fenced off from Morocco. Its police have been accused of breaking international rights conventions by beating African migrants who climbed the fences into the territories and deporting them on the spot without asylum procedures, so-called pushbacks. The Human Rights Commissioner of the 47 Nation Council of Europe, Nils Muziniks, said after meeting officials in Melilla and Madrid that, that the plan to legalize such deportations was, quote, in clear breach of human rights law. Quote, in many countries I have seen pushbacks, but nowhere are they legal or legalized, he told a news conference in Madrid. It would be a very bad pre precedent if such practices were enshrined in law because I think that that would mean the beginning of the end for the asylum system. Well, I can just say, uh, to put it very simply, good for Spain. Now, I want to give you guys uh, some sociological and historical observations on this. One, what is happening here? Spain is making this law that if these people try to hop the border from North Africa, the police have the obligation and the right to push them back. Why? It's not because of their race. There are many people of non-Spaniard race, non-Espanol race in Spain, and they are treated very well. They are treated as equals. Uh, it's not because of race. This is not a racial policy. It is because of religion, and this is not. This is what no one is pointing out. This is the observation that no one is really making. It's because of religion. The Spanish government doesn't want to admit it, but these people are Muslims, and because they are Muslims, they are most definitely a threat to society. This is being done after you had the massacre in France, after you've had um, numerous uh, Muslim terrorist cells ha working, conspiring in European nations. Now, all of the Western European countries after the French massacre, they are really turning the heat up on the the uh, Muslim populations on Muslim terrorist cells in their countries so it's because of religion and it, it's really in accordance to what I have been saying all along um, there are certain religions there are certain ideologies that should not belong in society and you'll say well Ted we are not a Christian nation yes we are not a Christian nation that is absolutely correct and I'm willing to accept accept that but what we must come to terms with are really two facts. The first fact is that civilization as we know it, the foundation of that civilization is Christianity. If it wasn't for Christianity, we'd prob probably be worshipping some emperor and we would be in some coliseum somewhere. And secondly, what we need to come to terms with is even as a secular nation, we can determine that certain ideas and ideologies do not belong in society. There comes a point where not every idea deserves to be heard and to be contended for. And I'll give you um, an example of that. The Arian heresy. The Arian heresy is the foundational ideology and doctrine of Islam. It came in the 4th century and was founded by somebody named Arius. He was a Libyan who lived in Egypt. And he believed that Jesus Christ wasn't God. He says that Jesus Christ was a creature. He wasn't divine. His view of Jesus Christ was extremely parallel to that of Muhammad, which is 
uh, why we say that Muhammad most definitely learned from this heresy. And the Emperor Constantine uh, conveyed a counsel to deal with this controversy, this theological controversy. And there, uh, there was Arius, and he came into the council, and they were all the holy fathers and all the bishops. They were there to argue against his heresies. And uh, S Santa Claus was there. Yes, that's right, Santa Claus was there. Not Saint Nick, uh, the way we think of him, as he you know, a fat guy going down the chimney and eating carrots and uh, cookies and milk. Oh, sorry, the carrots are for the deers. Uh, but the real Saint Nicholas. Yes, he was indeed real. There was a real Santa Claus. And he was Greek, and he lived in what is today called Turkey, but in his day it was part of Hellas. It was Greek. It was Byzantium. And uh, Santa Claus was there, and Arius was there, and Arius began to spew out his heretical drivel. You know, Jesus Christ isn't God. Here's the scriptural proof for it, you know. Jesus Christ says that uh, I only do the will of my Father. How could he be divine if he does the will of his Father? Blah, blah. He's going on and on with all of these, all these arguments. And then uh, Santa Claus pops up. And it's Santa Claus's turn to um, refute what Arius is saying. And Santa Claus doesn't waste any time. He punches Arius in the face and knocks him out. Why? Because there comes a point where certain ideas do not deserve to be taken seriously. I mean, if every single idea is to be taken seriously, let me give you this scenario. Let's say there's a group of people called crap eaters, and they eat excrement. And they come along and they say, well, excrement is actually really good for you. And there's some really amazing recipes you can eat from excrement. And uh, there's some great products and great uh, types of excrement. Bear excrement is great. Deer excrement is very good for making excrement soup. soup. And we have all these different recipes. And this uh, group of people, they begin to write cookbooks. Uh, great recipes, how to cook your excrement. Cat excrement, dog excrement. Why throw out all the excrement from the litter box? Here's some great recipes. Here's some excrement rice krispies, excrement soup, uh, excrement sauce. Um, why go to the grocery store when you can just eat your own excrement? And you had this whole ideological uh, ideological movement, and you don't really take them seriously because I mean they're who they're crazy, right? But then this movement, though it's a minority and it will always remain a minority, let's say this movement gains uh, some leverage in society. Let's say that there's some professors who come along, and the prof and the and there's some uh, these professors are from some some prestigious universities, and they come out of the out of the bathroom and they say, "I'm an excrement e I'm an excrement eater, and I've been an excrement excrement eater all my life, and I've done papers and essays on excrement eating, and it's really not that bad for you. It's, as long as you cook it well, as long as you cook the excrement in a certain temperature." Uh, and you eat it, I mean, it's not going to hurt you, just like pork, right? I mean, pork is very dangerous if you don't cook it right, but if you can cook it correctly, then you have no fear of dying from any disease, from trichinosis or anything like that. So why should excrement be treated any differently than pork, right? So then all of a sudden you have some politicians who are excrement eaters, and they start coming out of the bathroom, not the closet, the bathroom, and they start pushing for legislation. We should we should be uh, an official religion, we should be an official group, um, Excrement isn't really bad for you, and then all of a sudden they want to start making excrement restaurants. And well, there's a bunch of people, you know, who say that's wrong. We shouldn't have excrement restaurants. And some excrement eaters go to go to an IHOP and say, "I want some excrement." IHOP says, "We don't serve you." I'm gonna sue you, IHOP. And then they go take it to the local level, to the state level. And then all of a sudden they take it up to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court says. Well, we, we, you know, we, we, we can't accept this. We shut it down. Excrement eaters get mad. They start protesting. They start rallying up. They start pulling verses from the Bible saying that there are certain verses that can be interpreted justifying excrement eating. Christians should also be accepting this. All of a sudden, you got pastors involved. Pastors are taking their sides. you got pastors not taking their sides. All of a sudden, you got judges taking their sides. The, the, all of a sudden, it makes it on the damn ballot box. Vote to allow excrement restaurants. Should we be able to sue IHOP for not serving human crap? Um, and then the Supreme Court shuts it down again. Well, we're going to take it again to the Supreme Court. And they do it every single year. And eventually the Supreme Court finally passes it. The states say, well, we don't want to allow excrement restaurants in our state. That's disgusting. That's not that, that our, our states are clean and healthy. We're not going to allow this kind of garbage in our state. Supreme Court says you have to do it. Then the next year comes, and they strike it off again, and it's no longer there. States don't have to do it anymore. And then they come back, and they accept it again. Do you see my point? Uh, there comes a point where ideas are so disgusting and crazy and stupid 
that we shouldn't be able to even hear them. We shouldn't. We should be free, and we should have the liberty to say we don't want to hear that garbage. We don't want this crap in our society. If every idea should be heard, then how far do you want to take this? So it goes back to what Spain does has is doing. They don't want this crap in their society, even though Spain really is a secular nation, despite uh, the predominance of Catholicism there. They have made the determination that there are certain dangerous people with certain dangerous ideologies that should not be in their country. Certain ideas are so disgusting, so diabolical, and so dangerous that they should not be heard. It is better for Santa Claus to come down and just punch these bastards right in the face. This is Theodore Schubert. Hope you have enjoyed this message. Hope you have learned something from this message. You just heard some feel, logic. God bless and God be with us. Como Santa María desvió a Moncha, que se non fosse con un cabaleiro con quem posera desir. Oh,